Good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's View in Africa. My name is Dennis Riva. I am a junior researcher at the Institute for Security Studies, focusing on maritime security. Now, uh, some people perceive maritime security to be um, to be existent in terms of uh, um, traditional uh, strategic studies, sort of uh, traditional security navies. But I hope today's presentation will show that maritime security goes beyond navies or piracy and includes other issues that that are all interlinked and need to be approached holistically. Now, with that being said, uh, the topic of today's presentation is piracy of the coast of Somalia. And more specifically, um, it is centered around the achievements of the international efforts to counter piracy of the coast of Somalia, um, dedicated, oh, as many of you know, um, to the 10-year anniversary of these international efforts. Um, today's discussion will be centered around two broad um, themes. The first is centered around the results achieved at sea with regard to fighting piracy, uh, deterring piracy, uh, protecting ships and vessels. And the second theme will be centered around the results achieved by the international community on land and specifically in terms of addressing the root causes of um, piracy in Somalia and in terms of um, fighting the criminal networks that are involved in piracy in the first place. Now, as I've mentioned, as many of you know, this year marks a 10-year anniversary of the United Nations Security Council Resolution, um, year resolution 1816, that was adopted to respond to the growing number of armed robbery and piracy incidents of the coast of Somalia. Uh, to give you just a, a context and uh, to set a scene, at the time, um, the number of piracy attacks was on the increase. Um, and they reached the level of 111 attacks in 2008 with 30 successful hijackings. Uh, the issue continued to deteriorate until 2011, where uh, the peak number of attacks was reached, uh, 236 attacks off the coast of Somalia. Uh, conducted by pirates and the number of hijackings reached its peak in 2010 with 49 successful hijackings. Um, important to note also for the matter of, for, for, for us to understand the scene that although originally um, humanitarian ships and ships that were traversing Somali waters were targeted, eventually um, pirates ventured further on to target merchant ships that were going through the Suez Canal or from the Suez Canal. Now, this turned the piracy from a local issue, uh, security issue, to a really international issue. As, um, as many of you know, the Suez Canal is responsible for 8% of the international of the total ocean trade, and plays an important role for the European trade with the Middle East in terms of oil. So, as it were, the 2008 uh, resolution paved the way for coordinated international efforts in addressing piracy of the coast of Somalia. Now, with, in terms of uh, to discuss the, the outcomes, I want to focus my discussion on four broad aspects um, that are related to this topic. Um, first of all, the growing number of attacks have resulted in development of the so-called best management practices or BMPs, um, these, these uh, management practices are basically a set of rules or guidelines that ships and shipping uh, companies need to follow when traversing the at-risk areas in sea. Um, to give you an example, some of these practices include the presence of armed guards on board of the ships, um, the installation of barbed wire and water cannons on vessels, on board of the vessels, um, regulation and, and um, suggestion in terms of the kind of speed that the ship needs to follow and the kind of trajectory that the ship needs to follow to avoid piracy. And these were important because, in essence, they addressed the vulnerability that was often exploited by pirates in terms of ships and shipping. And they, in, in doing so, they allowed to reduce the risks associated with pirates. Uh, the second broad theme, broad theme relates to presence of international navies, 
which served an important role in terms of the mandate in uh, deterring pirate attacks, protecting ships, and hopefully, when it happens, um, prosecuting the pirates if, if, if they were caught. Um, some of the examples of the uh, international navies present in the region include the United, uh, European Union Naval Force and the uh, Combined Maritime Force, and they have also played a, a significant role in deterring pirates and bringing pirates uh, to justice. Thirdly, um, the, number, the growing number of attacks forced the region uh, to come together and really find the best way to approach the issue from a regional standpoint. Um, we saw the emergence of contact group on piracy off the coast of Somalia and the Djibouti Code of Contact with its uh, Jeddah Amendment. And what it really resulted in is an improved and more effective way to fight piracy through um, shared maritime domain awareness in the region, through information sharing and uh, uh, trust building. What it really resulted in is more effective way to counter piracy and importantly, the, the benefits of the growing regional cooperation goes beyond um, piracy to include other illegal activities that are happening at the sea. And finally, one important aspect uh, that emerged from the, uh, from the international efforts was directed towards the land. And there is a keen understanding among the international Somali partners, Somali partners and uh, uh, and the international community at large, that without addressing the root causes that served as the conditions conducive to the emergence of piracy, no long-term solution can be reached. So looking at the outcomes of, of these um, efforts, we can certainly say that the, uh, the international community succeeded in securing the trade lines and reducing the number of attacks. Now, I've mentioned there were 236 attacks or piracy incidents in 2011. Now, this number dropped to just five in 2017 and three in 2018 so far. Now, of course, the fact that pirates continue their operations in the region is worrisome. However, um, we can see that we can see a clear decline in number of attacks and successful uh, hijackings. In terms of hijacking, uh, the last hijacking that took place successfully was the hijacking of the ship Ares 13. Um, and that was the first successful incident in five years. Um, it, is, it can also be argued that the Ares 13 did not follow uh, the prescribed best management practices and, and therefore made itself vulnerable to pirate attacks. Overall, 10 years passed from the first resolution on Somali piracy. We can clearly see that um, sufficient and, and significant um, um, outcome, uh, achievements were made in fighting the issue to the point that, uh, I mean, it is proven by, by the statistics, we can see that the number of attacks and successful hijackings has dramatically decreased. Now, the question is then, is piracy no longer a threat? And the answer to that is yes and no, and it depends on how you look at the issue. So to understand it closer, um, to better, we need to understand the phenomenon of piracy better. Um, there is a general perception among the, the, the public um, that pirates are, uh, there's a romant romanticized view of them, that the pirates are disgruntled, some kind of disgruntled fishermen who are fighting for justice against the illegal uh, fishing vessels in Somali waters. And the pirates themselves quite often employ these tactics when they describe themselves as, um, as victims or even as Robin Hoods, stealing from the rich and given to the poor. Um, and with that regard, the, the impact of illegal fishing is an important aspect, and it, it, it is fair to suggest that it might have played a role. However, it, for us, it is important to remember that uh, the attacks, the pirate attacks that happened in the past 10 years and before were primarily carried out not by loose groups of fishermen, but by 
well-coordinated, well-organized criminal organizations. Now, these criminal organizations operate as many other criminal organizations in, in the sense that they have means, they have the ships, they have the equipment, they have the know-how, they understand the law and the loopholes that can be exploited with, with the view of maximizing their profit in illegal ways. For these criminal groups, as uh, for, for pirate groups, as any other groups, um, it is all about the, um, the dichotomy, the, the contrast between the profit and the risk. And what we, what we see after 10 years of international efforts being taken to counter piracy is that piracy is no longer profitable. Uh, the presence of international navies, the uh, best management practices, the, the capacity that was created within Somalia, um, they all increase the risks and reduce the profit for pirates. And this might explain, and in fact explains, the reason why the number of pirate attacks has decreased. But is it fair to say that the piracy has disappeared? No. Uh, quite unfortunately, uh, recent, recent um, interviews conducted with former pirates and uh, stakeholders and experts in the field seem to suggest that these pirate action groups have in fact not disappeared but shifted their um, activities away from piracy to more profitable illegal activities such as um, drug smuggling, human trafficking, arms smuggling, etc. And they continue to exploit the root causes, as I mentioned, that, that are existent in the system. Um, the legal loopholes, the, group, uh, the, the uh, corruption, the weak governance, and the lack of rule of law. So the message that I'm trying to send here is that these pirate groups are really not um, dedicated piracy enthusiasts. Uh, piracy is not necessarily something they are solely focusing on. They they engage in piracy as far as it is profitable and the moment it is no longer profitable they move move on to other means now with that being said um, a lot of notable achievements were made in somalia with the help of the international community and just generally in terms of fighting piracy on land some of these um, some of these important achievements are for instance the creation of capacity or a degree of capacity to fight organized crime that is uh, that that partakes in piracy, uh, the emergence of capacity to disrupt pirates at sea, um, and um, here Puntuan comes to mind, for instance, and the success of Puntuan State in driving away pirate action groups and actually um, reducing the number of, of pirate action groups operating in uh, the state with the help of a dedicated maritime police force. Um, furthermore, the new prisons were created for pirates. I mean, coming back to uh, the example of Puntuant, at some point, the Puntuant uh, prison system had to let go of some low-level criminals to make space for pirates who were sent to prison. So, some achievements were made, however, these successes are leveled by instability, unfortunately, instability within the Somali, within the federal government of Somalia. And this instability is, uh, there are two important aspects here that we can briefly mention. It is, of course, the war against Al-Shabaab uh, that drains the resources and the attention of the government. And, of course, the internal fighting that still continues within the Somali government and most recently uh, some of you might be aware there was a fallout during the negotiation process between the federal government of Somalia and the federal states um, where agreements were not reached that were meant to be reached, which of course impacts on the stability of the state. And this is important because without this stability, the conditions that were conducive to the existence, to the emergence of piracy, remain in place. And um, the conditions the, the, the positive trajectory is just not there. Um, we see that um, social acceptability within the coastal communities, for instance, uh, in terms of um, 
in terms of engaging with piracy and, and uh, serving as the recruiting pool for pirates, arguably it was and arguably might still remain there, the unemployment in the coastal communities and the lack of financial opportunities. I mean, if we look at the um, interviews conducted with former Somali pirates, a lot of the times the, the uh, re reasons that these people list for joining pirate action groups were because of uh, unemployment, lack of financial opportunities. And of course, the lack of rule of law and weak rule of law serves a role. Now, these criminal groups, once again, are not dedicated pirate groups. They're criminal groups and they, engaged, they, they, uh, they engage in crime of opportunity. And so if the opportunity presents itself in the future, these criminal networks that are now engaged in other criminal activities could as well go back to piracy. Um, to, you know, and although it is unlikely that piracy will become uh, an issue, a big issue, um, or because it is unlikely that piracy will become profitable in the near future, as I mentioned, with the, with the presence of, of international navies and the uh, best, uh, best maritime practices, the weakness of the Somali state means that the country will remain dependent on the international presence and international support for its security. Now, to conclude, a few um, important key, key messages can be highlighted. First of all, it is evident that the root causes and the local solutions it, um, need to be addressed in the future for us to come to a long-term solution to handle piracy. Uh, it is also evident that state building in Somalia, it has been slow, it is a slow process, it is not very effective, um, and it's, it's a troublesome process, and, and the perspectives of, of stability emerging in Somalia is unfortunate, it's unfortunately, it's, it's a long process ahead. But with that being said, example of Puntland provides a, a hopeful example, a, a hopeful reminder that local solutions can be created and what we need to look at is the ability to replicate, not perhaps not replicate, but to see how the lessons learned from the Puntland may be employed in other areas. Um, the second important key um, issue that should be discussed is of course the role of the region. And because a lot of the piracy, uh, piracy and illegal activities happens at sea and involves are the states in the region, it is in the regional cooperation and a better regional cooperation that a long-term solution rests. Um, the regional organizations like uh, the Djibouti Code of Contact and the um, IGET have a role to play and what, what should happen is an enhanced regional cooperation to tackle crime at sea. Um, and it is it is evident that, um, as it stands, piracy is unlikely to return to its peak levels in 2011. It is unlikely that uh, piracy will become profitable in the near future. But as long as the root causes that, that, that lead to the emergence of criminal groups exist, the piracy will remain a threat in Somalia. And with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much.